In this example, we have been given linear transformation t, taking us from domain R2 into codomain R2, and it's defined by t of xy is going to be 5x minus y and 2x minus 3y for the two components. What we're going to do is find t inverse and verify that it is in fact the inverse by taking the composition of the inverse with the original function. So in order to do so, what we're going to do is find the matrix of the transformation, and then we're going to use that to find the matrix of the inverse transformation. And then we'll interpret as a linear transformation. So first thing we'll need to do is actually find the matrix of our transformation, which we'll refer to as A. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, as well as several previous videos, we will be interpreting these uh, rows will be components, and then columns will represent the coefficients of the variables. So this is the first component, second component. So 5x minus y across the first row would be interpreted as 5, negative 1. The second component across the second row we can interpret as 2, negative 3 for the 2x minus 3y. Now we want to turn this into an inverse matrix, and I'm not saying that I'm feeling lazy today, but what I am saying is that technology is awesome and we should make use of it whenever we can. So entering the matrix menu, I'm going to edit a 2x2 two two matrix. I'm going to input it exactly as is, 5, negative 1, 2, negative 3. Then we'll exit the matrix menu re-enter the matrix menu and just make sure that everything got inputted correctly. 5, negative 1, 2, negative 3. Looks good to me. Re-entering the matrix menu, I'm going to select matrix A, and then I'm going to press the inverse button. And upon pressing the inverse button, this will give you the inverse, but it's going to give you a whole bunch of messy looking decimals. So pressing math, followed by enter, followed by enter, will convert all of that to a fraction for you. So copying down our four entries that we see here, this is 3 thirteenths, negative 1 thirteenth, 2 thirteenths, and negative 5 thirteenths. So a couple things to point out about this. All of the numerators are the same numbers that we saw from the original matrix. The 5 and 5 and negative 1 and negative 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 and 3. Also, if we take the determinant of this matrix, we'll see really quickly that it's equal to negative 13, and which is why we see a bunch of 13s in the denominators. And that can uh, come from the adjoint method. So we can interpret t inverse of xy in the following fashion. Here's your first component, second component, coefficient of x, coefficient of y. So this will be 3 thirteenths x minus 1 thirteenth y. And for the second component we'll see 2 thirteenths x minus 5 thirteenths y. Now to verify that these are in fact inverses of one another, what we're going to do is take the composition of t inverse of t of x, y. So that will be t inverse of t of x, y we had defined previously to be 5x minus y and 2x minus 3y. Now the inverse function states the following. We are going to take 3 thirteenths of the first component, so the 5x minus y, minus 1 thirteenth of the second component, which was, in this case, 2x minus 3y. And for the second component, we'll be taking 2 thirteenths of the first component which is 5x minus y, minus 5 thirteenths of the second component, which is 2x minus 3y. Allegedly, this should be the identity transformation. Let's verify. So for the first component, for the x component, I am seeing 3 thirteenths times 5, that'll be 15 thirteenths x, then distribute, that'll be minus 3 thirteenths y, Distributing the minus 1 thirteenth, that'll be minus 2 thirteenths x plus 3 thirteenths y. 
Doing the same thing through the second component, we distribute the 2 thirteenths, that'll be 10 thirteenths x minus 2 thirteenths y, and distributing the minus 5 thirteenths through, that'll be minus 10 thirteenths x, and then plus 15 thirteenths y. To simplify all of this, we have minus 3 thirteenths y plus 3 thirteenths y on the first component, and we're left with 15 thirteenths x minus 2 thirteenths x, which would be 13 thirteenths x, or simply x. For the second component, I see 10 thirteenths x minus 10 thirteenths x. Those will cancel out. I also see minus 2 thirteenths y plus 15 thirteenths y. That would be 13 thirteenths y which would be y, which is equal to the identity transformation in R2, which is exactly what we were supposed to get. Now for this one, I do want to leave you hanging. What I would like you all to try out is see if you can reverse this process by finding t of t inverse of x, y. I'll get you started. This means that you'll be finding t of 3 thirteenths x minus 1 thirteenth y and 2 thirteenths x minus 5 thirteenths y. See what happens when you plug this input into the original function t and see if you also get the identity transformation. Spoiler alert! You will, as long as you're doing it right.